with a recent firing addressed and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. As it was previously reported that Sylvester Stallone could be involved in WrestleMania 40, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter added that WrestleVotes reported that WWE was talking to Sylvester Stallone about appearing at WrestleMania this year since the character of Rocky Balboa was based in Philadelphia. Those at WWE have confirmed the talk but said that as of earlier in the week, Stallone had said there was a schedule conflict. So the deal hasn't been done unless he can or wants to remove the conflict. Taking to X, R-Truth said this about his recent travels as he is trying to find his way to Australia for the Elimination Chamber event. Well, I'm here in Austria. Where's everybody at? I don't see nobody. I bet you the hotels, the arenas empty. Should I just go back home? Hey, good mate. Back to the area port. Oi! Asked about potentially facing off against Becky Lynch at WrestleMania if she is to defeat Rhea Ripley for the title at Elimination Chamber, Nia Jax told Love Wrestling, Well, here's the thing. Everybody's scared of me. Everybody's coming for me because I have been dominating and nobody can take me out by themselves. That's why Rhea's going to have such a hard time. I feel like they're all trying to gang up and put out there it's going to be Becky. When in reality, I'm going to go win this and beat the crap out of Rhea and then Becky's going to have to face me. He said this about rumors of his entrance theme in WWE being changed, telling Graham GSM Matthews, Rev Theory is great. My song is great. A lot of people enjoy it. I have never loved, loved, loved it. You see me bouncing my head to New Day's music or AJ Styles comes to the ring with his music. I'm singing along. Samoa Joe when he was with us. The instrumentals. Roman Judgment Day. There is some music that gets me going. The kind of music I listen to in the gym, the kind of music that pumps me up, doesn't really fit Randy Orton the character. There is some truth to what you read. I was just as much behind it as WWE. We actually were working throughout the summer, me and Neil Lowry, with a new song. It kind of kept evolving and evolving, and when we thought we had something, a higher up, some WWE brass would listen to it and they'd go, that kind of sounds like Romans here. Take that out. It would evolve again. Now what do you think? We need to change this part because we need better cues for camera angles. It would evolve. It got to a point where we played it at Survivor Series with the intent of, am I going to come out to a new song tonight? The decision in the 11th hour was, Voices is a song that people have learned to love, and God damn it, even though it doesn't necessarily get my blood pumping it gets all those fans pumping and they know when they hear the first few notes they know who is walking down to the ring and how that makes them feel to change all of that i was going to change my gear i was going to try and make all these changes i bought a pair of kick pads let me try and change my look in the 11th hour it was like what am i doing i'm going to look like some old guy who changed his clothes i think the only change i had was instead of orton on the back of my gear it says rko that's the kind of change unless you're looking for it you're not going to notice i like the fact that throughout my career i've worn the same sh come out to the same sh done the same sh and it's worked if it ain't broke why change it Touching on AEW recently hiring former WWE writer Jennifer Peppermint, Eric Bischoff said this about it on his Strictly Business podcast. Well, I worked, I shouldn't say I worked, I didn't work closely with Jennifer when I was in WWE back in 2019. She was not a part of my team, although that didn't really mean much because nobody really knew who was on which writing staff. There was so much discussion and transition. But I got to know Jennifer and really, really liked her. 
I respect her work. She's got a tremendous background. She understands storytelling. She's tough. She's a very sweet person, easy to get along with. She's got a great personality, and she's very outgoing. But she's also tough. She's not going to be intimidated. I've watched her interact with Vince, and Vince can be very, very intimidating. I've watched her stand up to Vince. I watched her react to pressure that a lot of creative people that I've worked with in the past would have probably taken pretty hard. She digs in and does the work. This is the most exciting thing I've heard out of AEW in the last three years, maybe longer. It indicates a couple things to me. One is Tony Khan recognizes he has a problem. You can't fix a problem or come up with a solution if you don't recognize what's wrong with it first. And the fact that Tony is bringing in people at a high level suggests to me, and part of this is wishful thinking on my part, but I do hope I'm right, that Tony is recognizing that his creative, his fantasy wrestling matches and dream match nonsense and creating wrestling that appeals to the internet, it's not working. I've been banging on that drum for over two years now. I've gotten a lot of hate from it. The fact that Tony recognizes that he has a problem, recognizes that he needs to bring somebody in, as I've been saying for years now, you need somebody that understands a disciplined storytelling structure. Not only a beginning, middle, and end, but understanding the plot points along that arc that need to happen, it's almost like a checklist. They need to happen over the course of an arc in order to have any chance of building or retaining an audience. And that's what Tony has had a hard time doing, building and retaining an audience. He's gone from a premiere of 1.4 million viewers down to averaging around 800,000. That's a problem, especially when the overall audience of wrestling is growing because of WWE and their success. So I think the fact that Tony recognizes, hopefully, and brought somebody in who absolutely has the tools and the experience, and I believe the personality, Jen brings all of that to the table. Staying on the topic of Jennifer Pepperman, who is now the Vice President of Content of AEW, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter said this regarding her role in the promotion. An update on the AEW creative team and process following the hiring of Jennifer Pepperman, who is expected to be Mercedes Monet's personal writer as well as having a wider role as Vice President of Content. Pepperman will be heavily involved with the women's storylines, but also be involved in the men's storylines. Her first day was Dynamite on February 21st. Tony Khan will be the booker, but she'll be added to the likes of Brian Danielson, Sanjay Dutt, Jerry Lynn, Jimmy Jacobs, Will Washington, and others in the creative inner circle. They are not changing how they are doing things and will not be script writing promos for the most part. The idea is like it's always been, give the talent bullet points and they can use their own words to make those points. mentioning when Cody Rhodes found out about initially losing his WrestleMania spot against Roman Reigns to The Rock. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter reported that. For those who were wondering about what Rhodes did and didn't know about how things went down, he was told he was facing Reigns in the fall. He was not told about Rock getting the match as part of his deal on January 3rd, so any interview he did about finishing the story prior to the Rumble was with the idea he was definitely in the match, even with The Rock rumors out. He was told the day of the Rumble that Rock was facing Reigns even though he was winning the Rumble. He was also told that they would be going to Reigns against him later. So all the post-match stuff building that match wasn't there to swerve people as much to build a later match. But the fact it was not going to be Reigns versus Rhodes was kept secret from almost everyone, obviously, if you knew, because Rock wanted the angle the next Friday a surprise. Giving an update on the contract status of Drew McIntyre in WWE, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter noted that, while one would think McIntyre signed his new deal, and I'd at this point be shocked if he goes anywhere given they've set up a major Rhodes vs. McIntyre program, seemingly for after Mania, and he's got an already written program with Punk that he's been pushing hard for around November. But there is no new deal signed yet, but clearly the expectation is that he's staying and he's in the best position he's ever been given between his work and how hot the company is.
given the accusations and lawsuits against Vince McMahon and WWE, it seems many within the company have been reached out to, as the Wrestling Observer Newsletter stated. One WWE star noted that a lot of news reporters have contacted female talent in the company to ask them about potential abuse. Ringside News added that in the wake of these developments, a Chicago law firm has taken proactive steps to connect with individuals who may have suffered abuse linked to McMahon. Moreover, McMahon's future with WWE appears uncertain in the wake of the trafficking lawsuit with no clear path for his return. On Instagram, Shotzi, who recently suffered an ACL tear and underwent surgery, showed off her rehabilitation process. Talk about potentially sharing a ring with his brother, WWE commentator Corey Graves, in the future. Sam Adonis said this to Fightful. Honestly, I was devastated when he was injured in the first place. Just like any group of brothers, my dream, I don't know about his, but main eventing WrestleMania against Corey Graves is what we've thought about since we were children. I thought it would have been excellent. He eventually got hurt, and as far as I know, he's cleared right now. I don't know the circumstances of that. I'm very far removed from the inner workings of WWE. They seem to be knowing what they're doing, so I trust the process. If it's meant to be, then it's meant to be, but one of these days, I would love to be in the ring with my brother, whether it's in a tag team capacity or in a match. Who's to say when or where that would be possible, but I know he still has the urges to be in the ring. He still wants to be a performer, but he's also a very intelligent man, and he knows he's very good at what he does. I don't think anyone's going to defraud him, or anybody is going to try to make him give up what he has to attain something different when this right now is so so valuable. Recalling his spot in the Elimination Chamber match where he was given an F5 by Brock Lesnar, Austin Theory told the West Sport, to be honest, there's nothing more dangerous in the WWE than the Elimination Chamber, and I think I'm the perfect man to answer that question. If you take it back to my first Elimination Chamber for the WWE Championship, I was one of the last competitors left in there, but I was with Brock Lesnar and I got F5'd off the top of the chamber, and I could have nearly ended my career there. Former WWE stars, the grizzled young vets, James Drake and Zach Gibson, give an update on their plans when asked about their contract status with TNA, telling Fightful, changes backstage is something that we've got very used to in the last 24 months. Maybe it's us. Maybe we show up and that's what happens. We are still current independent. We have not signed exclusively with anyone just yet, but that's not to say that that's how things will remain. We just wanted to stay independent just for a little while, just because of what we'd just been doing. We're enjoying exploring, we're enjoying casting the net out and exploring our options. If we get a good enough offer from somewhere, we're going to hear it. We're going to seriously consider it. So that's more or less where we're at right now. James Drake added, yeah, definitely. Just to kind of echo what Zach's saying, we decided to leave WWE on our own terms, and that wasn't something overnight. That was something we were thinking about for a long time, and it is a big decision. So we don't want to just hop from one thing to another without really thinking about what we want to do. It sounds so surreal, and I don't know, I guess cliche, but it feels as though out here in America with the independent circuit, we're kind of starting again on the independent circuit. We go back and forth to the UK, we do Rev Pro, Progress Wrestling, and we've done a few others that we did while we were growing up in wrestling, and that's still home to us. But now, we're green card holders. We live in America, we have our wives, we have families out here, and it's just so much bigger. You hear this, and you kind of go, okay, whatever. But once you get your feet on the ground, and you start going for it. You're looking at the east to west coast and you're looking at all the things in between and it's just such a big, big scene and I'm thoroughly enjoying it right now. I'm enjoying seeing different climates of wrestling fans as well, what works in certain place, what wouldn't work in another place. Also, hidden gems as well, certain talent that you've never heard of because they're not really talent on social media, but wow, there's some real hidden gems out there.
expressing her excitement over the Elimination Chamber event where she is set to face Nia Jax. Rhea Ripley told the West Sport, I'm glad that I had the sunnies because my eyes were getting a bit teary and I'm just happy to be home. I really am and I'm so happy that we get to bring a PLE to Australia. Not just any PLE, we get to bring Elimination Chamber. We're on the road to WrestleMania and one of the stops there is here in Australia, here in Perth, here at Optus Stadium and it's such a special event, it really is. To be the face of the PLE as well, to be on the poster, to have motionless and white as the theme song made for Rhea Ripley. So it makes me very, very proud and it just makes me look back at my career and it makes me look at everything that I've gone through and it's all built up to this moment. This is my WrestleMania before WrestleMania. Speaking about potentially facing either Rhea Ripley or Nia Jax at WrestleMania 40, Bianca Belair said this to love wrestling. Either one, I've actually never been able to wrestle Nia Jax in a one-on-one -on -one match. I would love to KOD Nia Jax. How iconic would that be? WrestleMania moment, especially at WrestleMania, that would be great. But also to beat Ripley is a dream match of mine. I feel like we've both been at like the opposite sides of the mountaintop climbing it. We're both on the cover of 2K this year, so it just makes sense. addressing his decision to continue booking larger venues despite the attendance being lower than the capacity AEW president Tony Khan told GV Wire it depends on the market and the time a lot of times those arenas have a lot of big advantages like email lists and marketing and they are a destination venue for shows it depends on the market and the timing certainly bigger arenas do have a lot of advantages they have a lot of sale contracts and really good marketing resources it depends they have a better chance of outreaching to certain customers than other venues Talking about The Rock, World Heavyweight Champion of WWE, Seth Rollins told The Mail, Look, I'm not 14 years old anymore. I'm 38 years old. I'm a full-grown man. I'm the WWE Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, he's going to open his mouth, run his mouth, say the same old crap he's been saying for the last two decades because he can't come up with any new material. Bottom line is, he is an afterthought. This is our story, our era. We've built the last decade of WWE, this Elimination Chamber show. This WrestleMania will be the biggest ever. We built it without him. He's been off doing his own thing and i'm not taking anything away from him he laid the groundwork for it but we built it man we built the wall we built the roof we've got this sorted he can come in and have a little tea but we will shoo him on the way out happy to have him happier to see him go Going over a portion of the ratings between AEW Dynamite and SmackDown, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter said the Canadian ratings for the week saw AEW win in the demo and even beat SmackDown with rockin' overall viewers while setting their all-time Canadian total viewer record. SmackDown on February 16th did 186,000 viewers and 64,000 in the 25-54 to 54 demo, which is absolutely shocking given Rock was on the show. At the TNA Wrestling No Surrender event, Eric Young would address the termination of Scott Demore as president of the promotion. The wrestlers, the crew, the producers, everybody that makes this place go, and most importantly, the lifeblood of this place, you, the fans. Still breathing, still living, and in truth, still thriving. This is an amazing place, filled with amazing people. And sometimes you lose something, you lose someone. And that, the next step is grief. And then after that, after a while, the next step is you have one of two choices. You can be lost with them, or you can move forward. 
And that's what we're going to do. That's what we've always done. We're going to move forward. Because that's what we need. That's what they would want. That's what is necessary. This place, this world, this universe, it's bigger than all of us. And we all want the same thing. We want this place to thrive. We want it to be seen. We want it to be respected. We want it to be loved. So I say this. To anybody that stands in our way. Anybody that would oppose us. Anybody asking for our unbiased surrender. Now I want this part because we're not on TV. I want it to be crystal fucking clear. Yeah. 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 Woo. This place, these people, you guys, TNA, there will be no surrender. Speaking of Scott Demore, his purchase offer for TNA Wrestling was revealed as the Wrestling Observer Newsletter stated, one noted for clarity that it was $10 million plus assuming all existing debts the company had, as well as the trade debt, so that Anthem itself would walk away with $10 million in the bank out of the deal. The Demore Group believed the company value was between $7 million and $12 million. Anthem turned down the offer cold without a counter offer made. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all later.